Well, the U.S. Senate may not have many rap artists, but it can still have rap-style feuds. The latest one is between Democrat Elizabeth Warren and Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky. Earlier this hour, you saw the spat between the two, and McConnell silenced Warren on the Senate floor after she tried to suggest that Jeff Sessions is a racist. Well, the press immediately attempted to turn Warren into a martyr over her silencing. So is McConnell's move a smart one or a dumb one? Hugh Hewitt is a longtime and wise observer of all this. He's the host of The Hugh Hewitt Show, a nationally syndicated radio program. He's also the author of a new book called The Fourth Way, The Conservative Playbook for a Lasting GOP Majority, and he joins us now. Hugh, thanks a lot for coming on. So, Tucker, thanks for having me. So this was, I mean, no one disputes this was within and consistent with Senate rules. Um, but yep. needless to say, the reaction was, you know, Mitch McConnell's a sexist, he can't handle strong women. Was this a wise play politically long term? It's a brilliant move by the leader for a couple of reasons. One, he is trying to restore a chamber that Harry Reid destroyed, Tucker. Harry Reid left almost every Senate tradition in tatters. All of the pillars are down and they're at each other's throats. And Mitch McConnell, if you read his memoir, The Long Game, he really is a traditionalist. He would like to restore the decorum and the process to the Senate. But in my view, as a Republican, as a partisan, making Elizabeth Warren the face of the Democratic Party is a brilliant stroke. I mean, if they can tag team her with Bernie Sanders and you can have a liberal law professor from Massachusetts and a socialist from Vermont tag team the leadership of the Democratic Party, I am very happy. The last time a left-wing law professor led the Democratic Party, at the end of his eight years, they were down 12 net seats in the Senate, 50-plus uh, seats in the House, 14 governorships, and 900 state legislators. So I'm all for left-wing law professors becoming the face of the Democratic Party. Really? I mean, I don't know. The, I mean, I see your point. I think it's a smart point. But I also think, in fact, I'd bet money that if Elizabeth Warren had received the Democratic nomination, she'd be the president right now. Because she is in line oh. with what Democratic voters think. She has a worldview. She can articulate it and agree with it. But it's, it's, she's not just an identity politics person. She's got a consistent left-wing economic view that has a lot of support in the country. She is also a very good law professor. I want to give her credit where credit is due. Tom Cotton had her in class and said she's a fine law professor. But honestly, Tucker, I don't think Hillary Clinton was that bad of a candidate that Elizabeth Warren would have been so much better she would have won. America is a center-right country, as noted by those other elections I pointed out, the loss of the Senate, the loss of the House, the loss of the, uh, the governorships, the 900 state legislators. Elizabeth Warren is hard left. Dodd-Frank is yeah, not she working. Is. She stands for, she stands for a, a, an economics that has got absolutely very little constituency outside of the echo chamber of the Democratic Party. So I, I do believe it is great for Mitch McConnell to throw rules at a law professor and say, live by the rules of the Senate. <laughs> so I, I also in this debate, and I'm sure you followed the debate, such as it was, over Senator Sessions, his confirmation, um, you heard people say just about everything about him. Cedric Richmond, who's a Democratic congressman from Louisiana, compared him to Bull Connor, which even 10 years ago would have been a pretty heavy thing to say. I wonder now if anyone even noticed. I mean, if everyone is Bull Connor, is anyone Bull Connor? Does this kind of rhetoric even have an effect anymore, do you think? That, that's the key question, Tucker. It's very dispiriting. I've worked for two attorney generals, Attorney General Bill Smith, Attorney General Ed Meese. They're both fine men. Jeff Sessions is arguably the best prepared man to be attorney general in the last 50 years. Deputy, assist, uh, Deputy Assistant uh, U.S. Attorney, uh, United States Attorney, State Attorney General, four times the United States Senator on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Everybody in the Democratic caucus knows better than what they said. They will tell you that off the record. And it is yeah. disgraceful what they said about Sessions. He'll be a great AG. And, and I just do think all standards have gone, and I blame uh, Harry Reid, who, by the way, also enabled Jeff Sessions to get confirmed by using the Reid rule to destroy the filibuster. But it's Harry Reid's legacy. It's a mess. It's a completely uncivil place that I don't know that, that Mitch McConnell can repair even if he wants to. And I'm yeah. not sure we want to repair it until after Gorsuch is confirmed. It's a pretty uncivil country, though, all of a sudden. Uh, so you just wrote a book on the fourth way. What's the fourth way? Fourth way is the, uh, the, the succession to uh, FDR's first way, big government, Ronald Reagan's attempt to roll it back, Tony Blair and Bill Clinton's third way to rebrand it. The fourth way is merging what Donald Trump wants to do, infrastructure, which I think he should get, a 350-ship Navy, which I think he should get, the wall, which he should get, regulatory reform, 
and Reagan Republicanism, Paul Ryan Republicanism. We need entitlement reform. So the fourth way is a merger of the two brands of Republicanism out there right now. President Trump won. He should get what he wants. And Paul Ryan is actually the soul of our ideology. And, uh, you know, big, big reforms on the entitlement side. And that's wow. the way to do it. Merge them. Boy, if, you can, if you, those groups can live together, that would be formidable. Hugh Hewitt, thanks a lot for this. Tucker Carlson, always a pleasure. Send your last guest, would you, a copy of The Looming Tower? He needs to read a little bit. <laughs> I may. Thank you, Hugh.